to quote Robin Williams. What year is it? <laughs> Welcome to the very end of 2023. We're talking about the best here. And the worst. The, and the worst at the Inside All Day podcast, where as we said in our Barbie special, where we won't last. But apparently we did. We've made it all the way to the end of the year. Um, I am always as player two of the Inside All Day podcast. I am the wonderful co-host, Chris, if I may say so myself. Joined as always by my lovely co-host, my wife, player one. Player one. Ms. <laughs> Nadia. I am very excited. This is our end of year kind of recap. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you a question. Oh. Do you know what our most controversial video has been this year on our channel? Uh, I have a feeling you've done the research. So I have I can't done wait, the research. I can't wait for you to let me know. <laughs> yeah. What, what has been our controversy? The Three Amigos. The, how can you be controversial with about the Three Amigos? All of our shorts from that that I've clipped gets the most obscene, weird comments on it. We hold on, hold on. Would you say we have a plethora of comments on it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> People are just out of this world. They are either very much a fond of it or very much against it, and they will voice their opinions. And I was like, okay, guys. <laughs> but did anybody say whether or not the turtle was real? <gasps> no. <laughs> That's true. Nobody said, nobody mentioned the turtle at all. because the turtle was real. <sighs> See? No, I kid. I they kid. focus we, on we other things, the but they don't talk about the turtle. That's right. They're all just distracting from the true issues at hand. Yes. <laughs> the turtles. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, this is all a sub turtle subplot. Yes. But yeah, I'm excited. We've seen a lot of media this year. We've, you know what? But though, I think it's a little generous to call some of what we saw media. But yes, we saw a lot of things this year. Yeah, and we're gonna mention ga uh, games and books. But you know, I'm really, really mad at myself. Mm. I am an avid reader, right? I I read. I've read a lot of comics this year. This year you just play one on I've TV? I've only read six books this year, and I'm so disappointed in myself. <laughs> I just, I went to my Goodreads, and I was like, oh, let me kind of look to see what I've read to kind of pick I out what my— I the beginning of the year, you were so dead set. You're like, I'm going to read one like, one point two bajillion books. books. 100 books was my goal, and YouTube took over, and then hundred it became six. <laughs> You, you're not, it wasn't just the doom, the doom scroll took I read over, a, creating the doom scroll took over. I read a lot of comics though. Mm -hmm. I pre, I read over 50 comics this year, which is pretty cool. Like uh, graphics, mm -hmm. if you count them as books. I mean, you're definitely getting story. I'm going to count it as a good, yeah. I count it as a fun read at the minimum. But only six actual novels. I, womp womp. I'm, you know, the the little girl in, in me, myself that used to read a book a week. Is, is crying. <laughs> She'd be crying. so disappointed if she could see you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, six books, one of which, two of which are spicy books. <laughs> like, so, so like. <laughs> I say meatballs. So, all right. So. Are we getting into it now? Are we? I, well, I, I mean, know. we can. How I mean, do you what feel else? about this year, Chris? How about do I feel media? about this year? Uh, about media in general? I mean, I think high, it was. Low. High lows? I, yeah, I wouldn't even say it was high. I like you doing low. Mm -hmm. I would not say it was high, low, high, low. I would say it was um, mostly low with a couple of odd peaks here and there. Um, some last minute. Uh, like some surprises. A, a last minute entry was a decent surprise. Hmm. Uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, well, I mean, well, I guess we're about to talk about it, aren't we? What do, so, what do you want to start first? Shows or movies? Let's do uh, start start small screen. Work our way up. Show, shows? Okay. Shows. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And we're going to mention what we like mm -hmm. and what we didn't. Do we want to start by talking about the shows we did like then? Or do you want to start with what we didn't like? Coin flip? Uh, let's start with what we liked. Let's let's start with some positivity. How about that? Positivity. It is the Christmas season. We should be keeping it positive. I don't think we watched a single show together except for one. Yes. Or two. 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 It's really funny. because Three. 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 Hold on. Let me do it next. Four. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, we both... We both want to uh, mention From, right? We yes. both enjoyed From. From season, season two. two. We The show that nobody talks about that everybody should yes, be talking this is about show was our I, hashtag, right? We, it's how we always talk about it. It's how we will continue to talk about it. I will say season two opens good, as I recall. The middle gets a little weak. A little but dragging, the ending, yeah. But the ending of the season more than makes up for it. The ending definitely hooked me enough to come back for season three. Oh, yeah, for sure. And we're going to avoid a little bit of spoilers, right? Yeah, for one. people. On yeah, that yeah. one here, we'll, okay. we'll try to drop a spoiler alert before we ruin your... You ruin your day. Before we ruin your entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so From, I would say, it gives a plus from it, like a thumbs yeah, up, right? I definitely give From 
season two a big thumbs up. If you haven't watched it, it is on MGM. MGM. Thank you so much. Yeah. It used to be called something else, and I could uh, all of a sudden Epics, I blanked on it. Yeah. I believe. And then it got switched it over to MGM. Yeah, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. But yeah, it's great. It's a horror mystery thriller, thriller. kind of sci fi almost show where well, you're really it's not a, sure and that's kind of the whole point of the show you're never really sure yeah it's about a bunch of people who who get ca- basically th- okay let me backtrack <laughs> that was a lot right there <laughs> it's done by the same people who did loss so that should thoughts all at once. i know <laughs> like my brain couldn't compute i was it was buffering so it's about uh people who uh they disappear from different places around the around the united states i don't know mm-hmm. if we had an international one uh but they That's always a see a tree know, yeah. and then they end up in a town that they can't escape. So it's always mm-hmm. just bringing them back, even if they continue down the road back. So then the town is divided. Yeah, by the time you see the tree in the road, it's too late. Yep. And the town is divided by two groups of people. One group that lives in the town, one that lives in this like hippy dippy type of like free love style. Colony house. C- colony house. And then there's like these vampire creatures that come out at night. House. And it's like, if you love Stephen King, if you love thrillers, if you love Lost, like it's all that kind of stuff. I recommend it. Yeah, absolutely. Big thrills, great acting. Um, the the monsters generally always seem creepy, scary and unbeatable, which they, is pretty great considering they've been pretty much fighting the same thing for two seasons now. Do you know that uh, meme with Charlie Day that goes where he's a conspiracy? Yes. So that was me first season. And it was all like, oh, this is all Norse mythology related. This is this. This is this. Totally scratched that in season two. They totally. Look out for the spoilers. Yeah. They totally 180'd me (laughs) in season two. I was like, well, that's not it real. That's not good. That's not going to fall here. Let me just take these post-it notes down and let's reconnect a couple strings. Yes. I need to put myself like my face on that on Charlie Tate just yeah. <laughs> when I'm talking to it. Uh, so yes, thumbs up. What's a thumbs down? What's a thumbs down? I mean, that's, I, I mean, I feel like I picked some real, real easy targets. Real here. winners. Some real. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's easy to start off with uh, She-Hulk. Was that this year? Wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. The beginning of the year. It's so hard. That I feel mo- like that 2022 show so hard and 2023 to to have just melted together a little bit in media because of the strike and everything. Well, they're also like identical twins in that they were terrible. You're right, She-Hulk, because it was before the strike. Mm-hmm. Or was it during the strike? Somewhere around there. I'm sure they like to blame it on the strike. Uh, you know what? I'm glad I forgot about that show. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's right, right how memorable. Off, right, right there. You know, Tatiana, was it Tatiana Mazzolani? Or, uh, I'm sure I've mispronounced her last name. You know, she's she's done good bits and other things, but this was not the show and destroyed the character. The writing was terrible. And they're I think the most fun they had making the show was just picking on the fans who were upset that they just destroyed the character. Who was the best character in that? Madison with a Y? Yeah, but not where you expected. But not where you expected. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Isn't that right, Wongers? Wongers, yes. <laughs> and the whole spoiled... Uh, she keeps spoiling Sopranos. Which her. I've never seen, so it spoiled it for me, too. I was like, okay, great. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's a that's a flop for me. That's a yeah, thumbs down. Yeah, that's a big womp womp. Womp womp. I, I rumored it's getting a season two, or did... It, I don't I, know I where it is at this point. That, that's getting, that, that got canned. So we may, we may be saved. From a season two of that. We'll see. All right. Well, what are you going to put up for a... Uh, we did a bad one. What are you going to put up for a winner here? Fall of the House of Usher. Mm. I So I'm on my Flanagan simp. We know this. I love all his work. Uh, You're a simp again? The only piece that he's ever done that I'm like, eh, about was the uh, Midnight Society. I, uh, yeah, could, I just could, didn't, We didn't even finish it. I don't no, think we could really get into it. I didn't feel bad about not finishing it. Fall of the House of Usher. Now, I uh, read... Uh, Poe in high school, but I was not really a big Poe person. I was more of an H.P. Lovecraft, which, by the way, it, uh, I guess James Wan is going to be doing a H.P. Lovecraft movie. That'll be good. It got announced today, which I be that, really that cool. That gives me big thumbs up energy. I mean, that seems like a genre. And that seems theme, right, up. Be right up his mm-hmm. alley. So uh, I don't know how to compare this to Poe's work. I know some people didn't like it because it it didn't truly adapt it, but I think for a modern day audience, it's a really good thriller and the little Easter eggs and storytelling was phenomenal. The Obviously, my, I like Mike Flanagan's work, so I'm always going to 
give it a try. And I think I binged that thing in two days. Yeah, you were pretty hard on it. I mean, you seem to be enjoying it. And this, and you know me, I always go to you. I'm like, listen, Chris, do you want to watch this with me? And yeah, you go, I yes. I can't watch okay. it the same Do you want to watch it right you? now with me? Yeah. No. Sometimes you're just so excited. You're like, I'm going to start this right I now. Said, are you um, in or you're out? Yeah. I just started that one. I was like, I'm out. I know I do not have the desire to watch this nearly as well, strong as you do. I only pull that card on you just once in a while. I know there, there are times where you're like, yeah, I want to watch it, but I don't want to watch it now. So but I'm there's like, items okay. where like I'm closer to the fence than a yes. And so, you know, you know, to push you, I'm never going to watch it. Yeah. Like uh, my one of the <laughs> other wins on my list. Yes. What's the other one on your list? Blue eyed samurai. Show. Blue eyed samurai. I loved it. Mm. I thought great storytelling. Again, the art is phenomenal. I didn't like the art. I don't like that the animation style doesn't do it for me. You know how much I love this this show? How much? I caught myself standing up in front of the TV and just my attention glued to it. One of those dad moves where you're just like your hands on the TV and you're just like kind of just watching it. That's how, that's do you know how, what I mean? That's how I used to watch it. Or your hands are crossed but you're standing watching no, it. and just leaning. Leaning into the TV with my hand on my hip was how I used to watch playoff hockey. Yeah, well, I mean, I was I was so it, in just I wanted more of the story. By the time it ended, I was very mm. sad that I didn't have more of the story to continue. That like three D ish animation style I find to be generally really hard to pull off, and I find it to be very oh, jarring did it, from the experience. I didn't I didn't love it. I didn't I couldn't I couldn't didn't like looking at it. I think you only watched one episode. With I did. Me. I didn't like looking at it. I can't when oh, it, the it visual gets style gets that. The visual style doesn't get better. Oh, and that's it's, fine. It's not. Hey, listen. Not everything has to be made for me. Yeah, that's true. But I just the story. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. It's beautiful and hear, artwork. And I hear lots of people enjoyed it. Yeah, it, I'm okay with being on the opposite and side. And it's surprised it's from Netflix. <laughs> I'm surprised, and it's Western animation. So it, another two big surprises for me. So those those are two big wins that I was that I pulled that card. I was like, "Listen, you're gonna watch it with me or not? No, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna binge it. I'm just gonna sit there and just watch it for the rest of the, the day." <laughs> well, yeah, you really did. Uh, you you just spent like a block of time plowing through that one. Just, yes, just like uh, your last win. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it seems to be a uh, good metric. What's a win on your t- in your? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be picking Jujutsu Kaisen season two. Okay. Now, I mean, it, it's really just. Mm, I gotta say, probably the best anime out there right now. There are recent problems for those who've been watching the anime. Recent problems with the studios aside where they've been uh, overworking everyone in the studios, so the production value isn't nearly as high as it always generally is. The story is great. <laughs> they're not afraid to kill characters. Uh, oh, no, they're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goran Maming is uh, commonplace. But it's it's a good show. It's got a lot of heart, and uh, the action sequences are fantastic. And the music, even when you don't like it, does eventually get to you. The animation is great in the action sequence, even though the couple of episodes that were uncompleted that they just put out with, like, storyboard art, for some reason, it just works with it. Well, and it's interesting, because in one of the instances, without giving any story any of the story away, so since there was less animators, less quality, but there's a part where... XYZ is doing like super move thing. And that's when the, exactly when the animation quality drops down. But it was interesting because it almost turned into more of like concept art. So it really just kind of sold the power, like this overloaded power fantasy even more because like, oh, wow, like even the animation is like, you know, I think some, some of the spots it fits. I'll be honest with you. I still don't understand the whole power concept in this show. <sighs> it's so good. We don't have time to cover it here. I know. It's, we, do you want to give people just a short there breakdown is, of what, is, what the story what is? the story is for Jujutsu Kaisen? Just the start of it. If somebody has yeah, never absolutely. seen it, so just to kind of sell them on it. Yeah, no, them. that's a great point. It's almost like we've been doing this Ele- for a little while. Elevator pitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> elevator pitch on it. Yeah, but Jujutsu Kaisen is this great anime. It's uh, about Yuji Itadori, who is a high schooler with, you know, uh-oh. He has slightly better than normal ability, you know, physical abilities. And uh, through a series of events, he ends up leaving his high school to join Jujitsu High, which is full of Jujitsu sorcerers who fight cursed spirits and uh, protect the world from them. And so it's a lot of demon fighting, slaying, but not demon slayer, which is still good. Demon Slayer is good. Uh, demon Slayer's arc, though, this year. Swords, the Swordsmith Village. Was, looks beautiful. Looks beautiful. Was great. Was but boring. I think Jujutsu Kaisen season two, which is still going. We we haven't finished it yet, mm-hmm. right? But we're completely caught up. Uh, I think is better 
than the the Ooh. swordsman arc. Swordsman. Yeah. Swords it actually village. should be an episode of Jitsu tonight. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I if I had to pick one, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Demon Slayer is the story it's just so powerful in a sense, I guess. There's more emotional impact in that story. Maybe because they look more cartoonish in a way. Well, and I think that's one of the, now we're, you know, we're, we're switching uh, shows here, but I think it's one of the things about Demon Slayer that really helps sell its level of violence is that it does have almost childish, cute, chibi art for the characters that is then juxtaposed against this incredibly, again, incredibly violent, gory show yeah. about fighting demons. Where Jujutsu Kaisen matches the energy with yes. the art style and the characters. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see how this season ends. But this season's been brutal. We've got major deaths going on, characters that will never come back. Yep. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but yeah. People taking massive injuries don't know exactly and you, what's going to happen. I lost a favorite character. I lost a couple favorite characters. And you knew, you knew ahead of time what mm-hmm. was going on, but I did not. So anytime you're, I was like, Chris, if so and so's dying this episode, I'm I'm out. I'm done. In, in fairness, though, you say that for pretty much every character in Jujutsu Kaisen, I just, which only makes it better when you mention characters that I know are going to die. <laughs> and then I just have to sit back there and be like, "Uh huh, yep, no, I don't know anything." What's another one of your shows? Another one of my shows for victory or victory. for defeat? I'm gonna go defeat here, and we're gonna oh defeat. Okay, yeah, we're gonna throw in not a coin to our Witcher. Uh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Witcher season womp, three. Womp, womp. Womp, womp, womp. The final journey of Geralt of Rivia. The only reason anybody watched it, watched that season was just to see Cavill off. That was it. Mm-hmm. Nobody's coming back for the next one. I don't care what they say. Nobody's coming back. We're getting wishlist Hemsworth. No, thank you. Wishlist Hemsworth. I'm, I'm out. Yeah. And they, uh, I mean, again, yes, poor writing, really bad storytelling this season completely like it's just a mix up uh not very canon either and the only reason i watched it was like okay bye to my bro (laughs) out (laughs) i'm out (laughs) as soon as the episode ended we were both like okay we're done (laughs) yeah no i i had zero reason to to want to go back into that it was really just a slog of just running running this (laughs) beloved main character through the mud like it was great let me let me show up to watch this show called The Witcher so I can watch not The Witcher and then be told how much greater everybody is than him. I completely forgot that The Witcher was the reason why I got death threats on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Oh, you forgot about that? I completely forgot because when they released the po- the original poster for it where they had uh, Yennefer and Siri. Siri huge on the poster and and what'd you call with, them side characters so i was like why why are the side characters like the biggest portion on the thing and yeah. and the witcher's like it's big and everybody's like no siri's the main character but i i get it she becomes that, that a, was a witcher poster also mm-hmm. had where's waldo of henry cavill it's called the witcher why isn't the witcher the main focus of the poster well, siri becomes a witcher. yes but it's siri's not the witcher when they're saying the witcher in the title they're talking about <sighs> I'm sure I'm going to get Senor of Rivia. I'm sure I'm going to have fun comments this time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool, bro. Um, uh, Do you have any more likeies for TV I have shows? a couple likeies. So, uh, and most of these are ones I watched without you. I really enjoyed Love and Death on HBO. It's, it's a thriller about uh, a housewife. I think it's in the 70s who has an affair with uh, a gentleman in her church who's also married and then his wife ends up uh, murdered and it's just figuring out what happened. Like, did she do it? it it's very, very good. It has, uh, uh, what's her name? Scarlet Witch. Um, um, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Olsen. Olsen. It's, it, I thought it was really well done. I think it, people slept on it. It was a little bit of a sleeper, but I thought it was great. Uh, Jen V, uh, Jen V, I liked it. You didn't watch it with me. I know a lot of it, people are like, ah, oh, it's a little, oh, I don't know. It's a little, and what you got to describe it? A little um, too uh, preachy on the nose, a bit, I guess, with with this generation. <laughs> but I thought it was a great spinoff to the boys, and I really was into where it was going and to see how it's going to collide with the next season of the boys. So I, I would recommend watching it. I would just just like power through the the message. 
The um, message. Yes. Uh, what else do I got? Shining Veil, which I think is great. It has Courtney Cox in it. It's kind of like a comedy horror show on, I think it's stars. Uh, it's, she plays uh, a woman who, you, is she psychotic or is she possessed? <laughs> and it's very dark humor and it's all very much horror tropes throughout this, this series. You get a little bit of Stephen King. You get a little bit from like known horror movies. So I would recommend it. I It was something that just kind of fell on my lap and I enjoyed it from start to finish. Hey, sometimes those are the, those are the best shows. Those are all my favorites that I listed. My flops, uh, I think everybody's flops. Secret Invasion. Oh, I forgot about Secret Invasion. We watched like, I think two episodes of it and we were like, no, yeah, we're we, out. You know, we watched like two or, th- I think we watched at least three episodes. But then we also were keeping up like the recaps just kind of see how. That's what know, I love can, about. Can they pull this out of a, can they pull this out of a tailspin? And the answer is no. That's what I love about my friends. I'll watch their streams and recaps on it and be like, okay, I don't need to watch this. I'm good. <laughs> All right. I watched the first three. I didn't see where, it, I didn't care where it was going. Uh, Ahsoka, another one. I, now I, I know of Ahsoka, mm-hmm. but I don't know the lore around Ahsoka because I never watched the animation that, and there was a ton of homework you had to do to understand Ahsoka. And then I didn't understand why there was also space Jesus <laughs> in it. I guess one of the posters had uh, whatever the main guy in there or one of the they were looking for. He looked like Space Jesus. Oh, uh, you're talking about, uh, was it Ezra? Yes. Yes. I was like, why is Space Jesus here? <laughs> he looks like it. Do uh, me a favor. Say Space Jesus space one more time. Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> so I did. Uh, I, Speed Jesus. I, I tapped out, out after season uh, episode two. I just. I had full faith that Ahsoka was going to be less than worth my time and I did not invest my time and I let everybody else kind of watch it first and I felt like that was a pro move. And then I can't get into Monarch. It's, I just, not enough Godzilla, too much people. So you're saying down with the monarchy? Yes. And then I have two honorable mentions. Oh, hit me. Last of Us. I can't decide if I like it or not. Like we watched it every single it did it? It was good. I find I personally find, but that it's not memorable. I find that the show is like the games, just enjoyable but entirely overhyped. Hmm. I I never played the games. Yeah, I think I mean the games were they were pretty. It was great set pieces, and it was graphically astounding for its you know time, especially the first one. Um, I didn't even bother with the second one because I didn't like the first one, and. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the the story was kind of well told, but a lot of The Last of Us was just big set. You know, it's just big set pieces. It's like, hey, here's this big open destroyed world. This is what it looks like. They mm-hmm. put a lot of effort in the games into giving you this destroyed post apocalyptic cities and what would the world look like and how it, and like and I get it and that's great and there's plenty of apocalypse games out there and I don't think it's a bad game. I just think it got way more uh, hype. Inter- well, I, I know the ending. I maintains hype. I know the ending. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Reacher, because we started season one this year, even mm-hmm. though it came out last year. And I'm enjoying Reacher. Yeah, you told me we're not allowed to watch it together. Yes, we're not. <laughs> 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 it's so, I didn't think I was going to be into it. You're like, hey, you want to you try it? I'm like, sure, why not? And it's just, the writing's great. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny, but it's serious, but yet it's funny. I just, I'm enjoying it. I and don't you know. should see this writing's abs. Yes. And ass. And back. <laughs> <laughs> I think many a times, I, every time he comes on the screen, I'm like, oh, good Lord. I can't look at the screen while you're sitting next <laughs> to me. <laughs> and he's like, over here, like, I'm getting, I get lost in the writing. I, I think you mean, again, yeah, I think you mean his abs. You get lost in his abs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have any more for shows? I mean, we could talk about Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Was that this a, year? Being a flop, wasn't it again this year? I thought that am was I, last year. Am again, I, am I doing it problem. again? Yeah, I think so. Again, it was just one of those shows that nobody cares about. And yeah, maybe I'm reaching into last year. I don't know. I think I you are. Of, I just kind of wrote it in my notebook. It was literally the last one I wrote in when we were sitting out at the coffee shop where we came here. I was like, you're oh, that tra- 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 uh, traumatized by I it, am. apparently. Well, I just yeah, we were we were talking about it because you know. Certain creators, you know, have terrible opinions about it. Is it a reboot? <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is it a sequel? Is it a prequel? A requel? It's a requel. <laughs> Nobody can define it, apparently. <laughs> it's 
scripture according to Lofty. I I love it because somebody today posted the meme with uh, uh, Matt Walsh, uh, you know, where he wears the sign that says, what is a woman? What is a prequel or what is this? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, that's great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I really can't say I have too much to add to shows for this year. What about, what about uh, movies? What do you think? <sighs> Rough year, rough year for movies too. I don't know. I've got two, four, six, eight movies right off the top, uh, and I completely forgot about Mario. That says a lot as favorite movies this well, year. Then I didn't write down nearly as many as you. Maybe you should kick us off. I like Barbie. You didn't like Barbie. No. I, I was watching it yesterday, and you're like, God, I can't. Why do you keep watching this crap? <laughs> oh dang it! Rings of Power was last year. Oh, it's all right. Yeah, I was that. It's okay. I, You're I just that, that traumatized. That traumatized. <laughs> like, no, I'm sure it was this year. I get it. Lord of the Rings is a big thing in our household. So yeah. uh, I have Barbie as one of my favorite films this year. And I don't care about anybody hating me, hating on me for it. I liked it. Art is subjective. Move on, folks. <laughs> hey, fair enough. I guess that's, you know, every, everybody's, I like to say everybody's allowed to like bad movies as long as you can understand that they're a bad movie. But the thing is, I don't think it's a bad movie. But, you know, well, what? again, yeah. opinions are like buttholes. Everybody's got one. <laughs> yeah. So, and they all And stink. when you go on the internet, <laughs> some people really like looking at other people's opinions. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Everybody's Ken enough for me. Moving hey, on. You, you snailed it on that one. Um, I mean, when it comes to the movies, the easy one we do always talk about. <laughs> I was waiting for either you or me to yeah, pull this I was one gonna, out. I wanted, I wanted to be... <laughs> Everybody expects it to come from you, so I wanted to beat you to it. And we're, of course, going to talk about the Dungeons and Dragons movie, Honor Among <sighs> Thieves. Such a good movie. Yeah. Such a good movie. Every time I talk about this movie, I know I know everybody is bored to hear. Yeah, let me, I, let me I, hit I you with it. the cliff notes. Uh, set design, real set design, design. <laughs> real, you know, no CGI, yeah, real character. Real puppetry, real yeah. special effects. Felt like you were at a table. If Some, you're a player, you yeah. know how it feels. You see where the DM adds their self into it. The NPC, uh, was Su it Paladin? Yeah. Was he a Paladin? Yeah, I think. pseudo-positive dad yeah. imagery. Yeah, Chris Pine is not a bard. He's a, He's a, definitely rogue. a rogue. Like, yeah, yeah. Su just fun. It was a fun movie, and the marketing was poorly done for this movie. Well, you know what I want to follow this up with? I know we we, we breezed, breezed through that one really quick there. And Jonathan because we've, deserved better. Yeah, Jonathan? Jonathan. <laughs> because we've talked about that one a lot over the course of this podcast. But I think um, really going along in that in that vein is, I want to talk about Godzilla Minus One. Oh. You, yeah, you didn't put it on your list. I, I When we talked about it, you didn't say it, and I wanted to surprise you. How did I not put that on my list? I just mentioned about it yesterday that it's the first movie that I went into the theater mm -hmm. and, and we left. And I was like, how long was that? Two hours? No way. It felt shorter than two hours. It Maybe because the story was so, like, pacing was so well done on the it. The music was excellent. Yeah. Nadia approved. Not, Nadia approved. Nadia Bladder approved. Well, and the reason, <laughs> and the reason I'm making this um, this segue from Dungeons & Dragons to Godzilla, you nailed it. The... The characters are fun. The music's astounding. The yeah. set design's great. Um, the Godzilla looks awesome. Oh yeah, he looks like an old school with mm -hmm. the the man who like the in the in the suit. And when he does his nuclear breath, I like the way his spine's like. Yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. But I think one of the things that really sets Godzilla apart, I would, I'm, I'm putting the we have more to talk about in yeah. terms of movies. I might put Godzilla minus one as like best movie of 2023. However caveat there are other movies on this list like dungeons and dragons where i would i am far more likely to go back and watch that movie interesting yeah i get well i would give godzilla minus one a when to when we get it for home yeah like watch I mean, it I one more time i watch a lot of anime so i'm not i'm not uh, averse to reading subtitles yeah yeah uh, yeah that was a big is, worry it is a lot of reading if you're if you're not ready for a movie being all japanese it's a lot of reading. However, it's not fast paced. No. That's what I was worried about going into the theater was like, oh man, I'm going to have to pay attention and then I wouldn't be able to pay attention to what actually is going on. But it was Just very well, like that. well like paced out for it. Uh, and I really cared about the characters, which I didn't see that coming from a Godzilla movie because of all the really bad Western Godzilla movies we've had. And I want to make a very strange point about the casting choices for that movie. This is not, this is 0% intended as an insult, 
what I thought was very interesting about that is there was, when you look at a lot of like popular American films, you're going to have, you know, you're going to have sexies in it. You're going to have like, you're going to have somebody like a, uh, who are we just talking about having a shirt off? The gentleman from, from, Reacher. from Reacher, right? Yes. Or you're going to have like Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson and, uh, you know. Sexualized. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got exactly. you. I got there you. was nobody in Godzilla who was just like so overtly like the attractive one. It was like everybody actually looked like normal people. It yeah. wasn't just a field of the most beautiful people you've ever seen. They didn't put Godzilla in a bikini. No. <laughs> I mean, that was my really my one downfall for the whole movie. I'm sure the there's a meme somewhere for. out there. <laughs> it was the one thing I asked for. <laughs> besides, well, hold on. It was the one thing I asked for. Besides, for all of you watching to like, subscribe. Thank you. Don't hit that <laughs> notification bell. So, you know, every time we got that new content dropping for you. And, uh, you know, as always, let us know how you agree, more than likely disagree, in the comments down below. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> please give us interaction. Yes, now he wants to hear Nadia wants to hear all your disagreements. I read all the comments. She promises folks. I might to not respond, respond to but each I, and every one of them. I, read I make all. that promise for her. <laughs> sure. Uh I have promises made my husband are not void or legal in the state. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. Or are void. A positive legal. one, which you didn't see. Oh, hit me. Uh when Evil Lurks, which is, a, I believe, an Argentina horror movie about two brothers uh, who discover some one of his neighbors were possessed. And possession is dealt with almost like a disease in this world, where if you destroy the thing that's possessed, it actually spreads. Interesting. And if you come in contact with it, you you have it. And if you go around other people... You're actually um, you're actually carrying that possession with you, so a lot of bad things follow you. Hmm. And it's a very dark movie. It does not end on a happy ending, but it was really cool to kind of come back to physical effects and special effects with the makeup design and the gore. Uh, there's a scene with a dog and a child in it, so just tr trigger warnings for anyone in this that wants to see it. Violent scene. It's very violent, uh, but it doesn't show much, but it is very violent. Uh, there's a scene where, like, a woman carrying a child, too, that's, it's just, it's very graphic. But the story itself is interesting because you could kind of relate it to maybe a little bit of the pandemic or STDs and stuff. There's a lot of things you can kind of correlate mm -hmm, it to, mm -hmm. but I was very enthralled into like involved into it mm. at, to the point where like I didn't have to look at my phone or nothing. And when I walked away from it, it just, it depressed me a little bit. It stayed with you. Yeah. So I would highly recommend it if you're a horror fan, trying it out. I know horror had a pretty good year. Talk to me was another one, but uh, I really enjoyed Thanksgiving. It was all right. You're not into slashers though. I'm not, I'm not into slashers. And it was, again, I, it's obvious from the beginning. But that's but it's it's supposed to be fun. It's not a movie that you're like, ah, oh, man, let me write a six hour YouTube video on it. No, but you I know? mean I mean I it, it should still have a little bit of thriller mystery aspect in it. You can figure out who it is from like the first I didn't know five, ten it was so obvious though. I time. didn't know. I I don't know who Dr. Dreamy is, the guy who plays Whoa, didn't do, whoa spoiler alert. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't seen it by right. now, sorry. Put it <laughs> Put a tw put a twenty <laughs> put a twenty in the spoiler jar. I uh, know, but I just I liked it. It kind of came back to those old school slashers where you just kind of turn off your brain and just enjoy it. I, you know, just and you like just a enjoy it for the kills. I didn't grow up watching slasher films, mm. so I I have scream scream six on this too as well, which we what? both watched. Yeah, yeah, sure. which came out this year, which I liked the New York setting out of it. It was all right. You know why I liked it? It's a mm. good bookend because of all the controversy going on around the seven if seven is never created or put in it's a good like they're done there's there's no cliffhanger at the end there's you know if they want to have it as a bookend they're good so you're saying that was the last gasp of scream i award you no points for that one <laughs> and may god have mercy on I've my got, soul i've got By a lot way, of horror on this in, too. in the in-between time just because I love calling myself out, because huh. the internet's going to do it anyways. More nerd rage. She-Hulk was also 2022. I just oh. I was apparently struggling with things to come up with that we didn't like, but I wanted to own that one before the internet beat me to it. Okay, that's fine. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, what else I have on my favorite list? 
I've got Evil Dead Rises, which you again did not see. I also see. didn't see. The She's it. Greater was enough to make me not want to go see it. It was not as bad. I'm sure it wasn't, but I don't, I don't. Best title scene I've seen all year. Uh, title sequence? Yeah. yeah. You talked about We're it a lot. <laughs> uh, I saw Cobwebs too, which is another horror movie, which is really good. It's a uh, kind of a story about parenthood. Uh, it's, it's really good. It's about a, uh, a kid whose parents are really weird. It has uh, the guy who plays Homelander in it, plays da- hmm. the dad in it. And he constantly hears this scratching in the walls and like noises coming from the walls and stuff. Uh, able I to, think I remember seeing trailers for yeah, this. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, the ending like surprises you. I don't want to give it away. And then I have Five Night at Freddy's. You don't want to spoil it again? No. And we, hey, we watch Five Night at Freddy's. Five Night at Freddy's was okay. I don't know if I put it in movies of the year. I didn't put it in movies in years. I would just say it's a favorable movie favorable of this year. Favorable movie. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I could appreciate that. I think they, I think the violence level was very interesting in Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> because when we were talking about it, there's the vast majority of the movie, you can sit there and go, oh, this is like a horror movie for, you know, kids in, you know, middle school, maybe in elementary school, if that's how your parents swing. But there's like one set of violence where it does just like, it just picks up for like, what, like five minutes of violence? And then it just kind of goes back to how it was. And it's like very interesting to see them just like peak the violence where they did and make their choices. But uh, Signal the lore, everything was fun. It was fun to see MatPat in it. Yeah. I mean, we grew up watching MatPat videos about Five, Night, uh, five, five Nights, Nights at Freddy's. Freddy's. Like I've never played the games, but I know a ton of the lore because of MatPat. Yeah. For those of you not in the know, MatPat is a YouTuber who game famously, theory. yeah, does game theory and he Film famously theory. did... A lot of videos in Five Nights at Freddy's. And he was one of the big people to like really uncover all the different lore pieces or work in conjunction to help discover the lore pieces of behind Five Nights at Freddy's. And he was the uh, waiter in the diner scene. It's so interesting to me about that game because it's marketed towards children. But if you actually know the lore behind it, it's not a child yeah. friendly nothing, game. Nothing about that is actually child friendly. Like zero percent of that game is child friendly. But yet it's marketed to, towards kids. Because well, it of looks, the, it looks like it's marketed towards kids I mean, because of the Chuck E. Cheese ness of it. Yeah, but you have toys. You ha- everything's in kids section for it. You have clothing. Well, hold on. It's all yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you're right. No, I mean, I, it is marketed towards kids, but it, it realistically it shouldn't be. <laughs> I agree. I, I back down. I concur. I have three movies that are flops you have and three, one honorable f- mention. Three flops and an honorable mention? Let me see. what I, do, do I have any movies that actually came out this year here for flops? Let me see if I have anything I can add. Every movie we've seen in the theater together? Yeah, really. It was just about. <laughs> Flash I mean, for yeah. you. <laughs> we talk about how, well, we can talk about falling asleep in Indiana Jones. I love telling people that. It, Indy, somebody said, oh, Indy 5 was that bad. Let me tell you something. My husband fell asleep. Oh, not at home, in the theater. Oh. During, during, during the <laughs> climax action sequence. Yes, yes. I was just not at off. It was it was boring. It was... Makes me appreciate Crystal Skull a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Man, you, just when you thought it couldn't get worse. It got worse. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Dial of Disappointment. Ugh. Dial of Dialysis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the writing was poor. Harrison Ford was phoning it in. They, you know, he's getting, you know, this is not, he's this is not a slight at him. Old. Yeah, not a slight at him, but he is getting older. It is clearly clear that some of the things are not as easy for him now as they once were. And uh, that's why you have extended tuck, tuck chase scenes. He looks angry all the time. It's just old man angry. Yeah, emotional secret. That's not acting. I know. <laughs> I mean, I was just thinking about it the other day because one of my favorite movies I saw with my dad when I was younger was The Fugitive with Tommy Lee Jones and mm-hmm. Harrison Ford in it. And I'm like, man, those movies were great with him. And then I look at Indy 5 and like, this it makes me feel bad for him on it. I mean, kudos to him. I mean, I'm sure it's very hard for older people to get acting gigs in big blockbusters like that, you know, but. Unless you were Indiana Jones. Unless you were Indiana Jones, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Indy, Indy was a loss. Uh, under worst movies, <clears throat> I put Barbie. I know you don't like Barbie, Chris. I know. I accept. I just wanted to. I, I wanted to it. get that little dagger twist in there. That's fine. You're still Kenuff for me. I'm I'm Kenuff. Yes. Well, I'll take it. Uh, Flash Two. I liked it. Or Flash as well. I should say was a terrible movie. 
That was my exit yesterday on the stream. I was like, I like to flash. And Mex goes, who are you? I don't know who you are anymore. Like You're not it. real. You're just an AI algorithm. Listen, the flash was unexpected to me because, I, I, listen, the DCEU is dead. We're, do, we're done, right? Until James Gunn like reboots it. And what, Aquaman's out this weekend? So- Ooh, I, I already I don't know how many reviews it was out of. I think I already saw Metacritic had it at like 40. I don't care. I'm still gonna go see it because I just it, it Flash surprised me because it was just like a fun popcorn film. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I didn't expect anything out of it. And it was just fun. It was fun to kind of see uh the ideas behind it, some characters I liked. Yeah, but based on his done. backstory, I expected to see him hit a lot more people. Now, am I talking about Flash or am I talking <laughs> Ezra Miller? Ezra Miller. <laughs> Uh, oh man! Come on, how, all those all those great extended running sequences. <laughs> I liked it. I I liked it enough that I I rewatched it because I put it on while I was like crocheting. Just put it on in the background. I liked it enough to know how disappointed I am in it every time I think about how much I actually like the Flash as character. I like the Flash as a character. I liked Grant Gustin's version of the Flash for the CW, at least for the first couple of seasons. I thought it was great. But I mean, I think... The true screen Flash. Michael Keaton was Currently. cool in it. I just, I think it it was a great uh, explaining different timeline things. It yeah, was really I like cool. their spaghetti. I'll give them that. Yeah, I like the spaghetti, the, the spaghetti thing. timeline explanation. I, I think, think it was like the best thing to come out of it. A lot of people don't understand that uh, Andy Muschietti, who came in to finish it up, like came into a mess and he put a product out there for theaters. So you, I, I feel people need yeah. to give a little bit more grace to him on that. Uh, and again, it, the DCEU, the DCEU, or is it, if I choose to is it going to be called the DCU or DCEU? DC, yeah, it's DCEU. It's DC Whatever, Entertainment the Universe. Snyderverse is done, Hold on, guys. hold on, no, <laughs> I, I got to say it though about Machete, and this is why I'm going to make you back this up, because he chose to go in and put his name on a turd and then deliver that as a product. It was a turd going in. It was a turd coming out. It was going to be a turd the whole time. But look now, he's going to be directing, uh, uh, I believe he's directing Brave and the Bold. That that doesn't, that you're saying that like it's supposed to instill. I don't know, man. Confidence in me. I was talking to Doge the other day because he knows him personally. And like he was telling me, Machete just went in and just like was like, hey, we're just, you know. Yeah, well, you tell him Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to back that up and bring it to Vegas. All right. And then uh, I have Exorcist Believer as a bust, but you didn't go see it. I did not. I only have the I'm thing I have on my list is Meg 2. Meg 2, yeah. You know what? You know what was the best part of going to Meg 2? Leaving Meg 2? No, going to go see it with Alex and Jude and everybody. <laughs> that was the best <laughs> part. Hearing the two of them next to me, just losing it over it. Yes. Oh, man. Because Jude loves the books. And remember, I think there's like several I, books on I this. I want to defend Jude's point while she's not here. Allegedly, the m books are not like the movies and the books are very good, to which my response was, the books would have to not be like the movies in order to be any kind <laughs> of good. I don't know. Maybe I should put that on my list for 2024 to read. What? Your 2024 list of books to ignore? Yes. <laughs> is this like your, is, is this book list equal to like that sacrificial bag of lettuce that everybody puts in their fridge? To, yes. To appease the rock gods? No, I'm going to read more in 2024. We'll see. Is that, is that, I have an honorable mention. You might mention. be a poet and you just don't know it if you're going to read more in 2024. I have an honorable mention movie. You have an honorable, hit me. Haunted Mansion. Because you couldn't decide if you liked it or not? I couldn't, you know, I watched it. It was fun. It should have came out around Halloween. I think it would have had a bit bigger uptick. It was it was cute. It was cute. It was fun. I would I would definitely watch it again, maybe around Halloween, put it on in the background. I'm not saying it's gonna be like some Oscar award winning movie, but I I I think people should give it a chance. Well, I mean, that is everybody's real prerogative on that one. It was released at a weird time. I think it kind of got you know, it kind of got screwed over because of was it was during the strike and they were trying to blame how poorly the Marvels well, was going to do. I think so. They swapped its release window with yeah. the Marvels. So they brought so it. So it should have released during October, mm -hmm. but instead it released during the middle of what, like middle of summer. Yeah. So I, I think it got. Uh, I think it just got screwed to try and bait something else into doing better. It's a movie about a ride at Disney. I mean, there's not much more to whoa, it. Guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on. Pirates of the Caribbean is a movie about a ride at Disney. How'd that turn out? Pretty good. Yeah. At least the first one. Yeah. Yeah. 
We can ask Johnny Depp. By the way, Pirates of the Caribbean or The Mummy? If you had to pick one. Well, uh, ooh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm going Mummy all day. Okay. Just That's n- Yeah, no, absolutely. I'll take Rick O'Connell with, you know, revol- with twin revolvers at 50 paces. <laughs> Uh, oh, another honorable mention, which yeah. I saw for the first time this year, Braveheart. Even though it didn't come out this year, <laughs> but you loved it so I much. Loved That's it why so it's an honorable much. mention. She it's, enjoyed it. Enough. I she just loved to it talk so it. much. I'm like, I'm I'm willing to dress up as Braveheart every year for Halloween. <laughs> That's how much I loved it. <laughs> hey, fair enough. This is, you know, it reminded me of how much music can impact a story when watching a movie. Because the adrenaline built up to each battle scene like with Gladiator. the music and stuff. Ah, Gladiator was okay. Ah, you're okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, all right. So we're out of movies and TV shows. You want to talk about books next? Or you want to do you... games? You want to end on games? I want to end on games. Let's talk about books. <laughs> well, I really have one. one I really feel like one thing in here I was excited about reading this year. And that's really, I have been enjoying reading the heck out of the Radiant Black series. Oh, we're doing from, comics. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm jumping. Yeah, I'm just talking reading in general. Oh, okay. Because really all I read this year was comics. I put zero novels on my read list this year. I was not hooked on phonics, I guess. Hooked on did phonics. Not, did not work for me this year. But uh, yeah, Radiant Black is just kind of, uh, I've heard a lot of people describe it as adult Power Rangers. If you've never read it before, uh, strange, mysterious power lands on Earth. Two friends find it. Uh, and it's you know, it's like your start of a superhero gig and learning how to use the powers and finding other people with similar powers and teaming up. It's that whole, it's that whole old bit, but kind of modernized. And it really, it's been a long time since I've read a new character that didn't just feel like some kind of terrible self insertion. There's a lot of aspects of the main character is kind of like, oh yeah, you know, they're, they're my age. They, they say they're actually originally from, they're like from Chicagoland area. So they talk about things from there. I'm like, oh, like I can really, I relate to the characters a lot. So I think they're super great. I think the artwork and the design is super cool. They do a lot of great things with the various issues. They're really big on putting out like black light issues because their coloring so amazing. Uh, one of the other super fun things they did this year is they, you know, without giving anything away for anybody who wants to read it, they have... Uh, a MacGuffin some people are fighting over and they did, you know, like your classic vote for. Oh, like back in the day. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know, vote, you know, vote for who's going to win the, you know, the mantle of power or whatever. And it was cool because they just had it as a QR code. So you just scanned it on your, on your phone. You got to go in, you got to make the vote. And uh, yeah, they're doing a lot of things. They're doing a lot of awesome things uh, and they're not afraid to take risks with it. They're finishing up uh, the Catalyst War arc right now. Seems to be going pretty good. I'm excited to give it a uh, more read, I guess I should say. So Radiant Black, Image, very good. Part of the Massiverse. There's a lot of other books in the Massiverse too. Um, there's, for the different Radiant colors, there's some solo issues um, for other heroes in there. I'm not a big fan of most, actually, the other heroes so far in the Massiverse besides the Radiants, except for Rogue Sun, which is another kind of great... Uh, young man gets powers for the first time and where I liked radiant black a lot because it was a really good modern reinterpretation of, you know, the superhero origin story. Mm -hmm. I give rogue son equal props for the opposite, which is it really nails kind of the classic character coming of age, coming to power story. Hmm. So I'm rogue son, also image, also part of the massive verse. Two of my favorite, two of my favorite reads right now. Big, uh, big thumbs up for uh, for both of those. Those are my my recommended reads. I just have one comic to recommend. What are you, what are you recommending? Nice House on the Lake. Oh, it's kind of like a sci fi thriller. It's about a group of people who get invited by their mystery. They all have one mysterious friend. It kind of sounds like our D and D campaign. <laughs> uh, get invited to a, a lake house celebration, and uh, it turns out like the end of the world is kind of happening around them. And their friend turns out to not be who they are. Roll a 20. Um, inside check. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, I I do recommend that the artwork's beautiful in it. And then my, the only, again, I only read six books this year. And my book recommendation were the last two Jim Butcher Dresden File books because I finished those this year. Hey, we talk about Dresden Files. In fact, you know what? That it brings up a very good point. One of the best things I read this year is right here. It is the book Jim Butcher didn't release. Come on, Jim. He released a book, just not a Dresden yeah, book. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you know what I mean. 
Yeah. You know what I we mean, want. Re- you know what he we released want. like a short story, like a short Dresden yeah, no, story. No, 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 I know. No, no, I no, know. No, 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 I know. No. I'm waiting too, man. I like how uh You have yeah, but you haven't been waiting as long as I have. That's true. That's true. You know what we should do when it's announced when it's going to be released? We mm-hmm. should listen to all of the books up together mm. so that we're both ready for this. We're obviously buying two copies, right? Because I'm not sharing. For sure, for sure. Hey, let me tell people the did we tell people the cool thing you did for my birthday? I can't remember if you talked about that. Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, your birthday just this, happened. This, this is a per- yeah, yeah. This is a perfect time to talk about it. Super cool. I actually posted it up on uh, Twitter or X, as it's now known. I still do that all X, the time. X Twitter, whatever. It's really hard to uh, everybody not call does it. Twitter, it. Right? Yeah. But uh, you know, I never thought I'd really care about getting a cameo. My <laughs> lovely wife. I had was, a coupon. <laughs> <laughs> I had a coupon. I had a coupon. My <laughs> lovely wife was nice enough to get me a cameo, and it was for an interesting one. I always talk about. Uh, James Marsters, Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, is the voice for he does he everybody. does all the voice work for everybody in the audiobooks for all for the Dresden Files except for I think one of them, and it was interesting because Jim Butcher always said that's who he envisioned as as uh, Dresden himself, and it's great because as you're listening to the audiobooks and you go from the first one to the last one, it really starts off with him like kind of having started off his audio career. It sounded like just do like. The audiobooks, yeah, because he just kind of reads it, and then Harry enters the room and casts a spell, and this, and he says "fuego" and shoots fire, and then by the time you get to the last book, he is like, he's so into it, you know. Harry roars into the room, "fuego," you know, he's just yes. like way into it, can, and so this is a long way, yeah. Can I add my part into this? Please add your part so, in. So when I went to go purchase it, mm-hmm. it leaves a little area like, "Hey, give me notes of like who you're, who's the name, and blah." Well, we didn't uh, even say who it was yet. Well, uh, I mean, we kind James of alluded, yeah, 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 very alluded. So I go, "Hey, uh, my husband loves Dresden Files. Loves listening to you read the Dresden Files. Could you please do something, Harry Dresden, for his birthday?" That's it. That's the notes I left. That's it. Didn't give him, give him direction. I was just like Dresden because I'm sure he gets a lot of like. Hey, give me Buffy yeah. the Vampire Slayer Spike stuff, right? I'm sure he does a lot of Spike thirst. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so continue. What did he do for you, Chris? So one of the one of the great side characters in the Dresden series um, is the pixie by the name of Toot Toot, and which you understand is, as well. It it sounds cute. It sounds funny. Uh, the Fae are dark and dangerous and not to be messed with in the Dresden mm-hmm. File series. But it doesn't mean Toot Toot doesn't just talk like this. So I got like three whole minutes of James Masters wishing me the happiest birthday. As Toot Toot. As Toot Toot. It was not as Harry Dresden. Not as Harry Dresden. Which I just, that's yeah. what I assume he would have done. Yeah, exactly. I see this. I think maybe he's going to switch. He starts that way. I think maybe he'll switch off or something. I'm like, oh, no, this is cool. It's no. full it's three, like minutes, three of minutes of Toot Toot. Three minutes of Toot Toot. It's. It wasn't, wasn't what I expected. It was never what I would have asked for, but it was absolutely fantastic. Yes. Yes, that will go down in birthday history, right? Yep, Legend. Absolutely. Uh, all right. I have no more books, obviously. Do you want to get into games so we can <laughs> kind of wrap up the episode? You're going to do a 2023 video game wrap up? We sure can. I mean, I just got a couple to talk about. How many do you have on your list? One, two, three, 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 three. four. Four. Oh. Uh-oh. I got uh, one, two, three honorable mentions in one game of the year. Why don't you give me. Two honorable. Give me one honorable mention, then I'll throw an honorable mention. So uh, I'm a big Harry Potter fan, obviously, Nuh-uh. right? Yeah. Never seen it. Hashtag Slytherin. Slither what? Slytherin. Hashtag Slytherwin. Slytherin. Slytherin. Slytherin for life. Uh, and You're doing gang symbols down here. <laughs> hashtag. She's, she's going hashtag, <laughs> but she's doing it down here. So I just see like, like are you, are you hash side? Hashtag Slytherin. You know how we roll. Um, <laughs> and at the time, I was unemployed when the game came out, but I had a job lined up, so I was just taking a break. So you were fun employed. I was fun employed, right? We because I I had was laid off from my one job. What she's really trying to say is she quit her job specifically so she could play time to play Harry Potter. But I set myself up, right? I had my Slytherin snuggie. We had like my Slytherin blanket, and I played the heck out of that game. And that game sure did. was phenomenal. It was great. I was a dark wizard. I was killing everything left and right. Pew, pew, pew. I loved it. I thought it, it like, even if you're not a Harry Potter game <laughs> fan, uh, fan, but you're a gamer, I think you would enjoy the game. Well, hold on. Hit At least me. an RPG game. How, how did Open you play that one more time? Pew, pew. Pew, pew. As soon as I leveled up. I As soon as you can get, as soon as you could 
Get the I dark would, crew. Out of cadavra? <laughs> yeah. You turn it into dark wizard Oprah. You get a death curse. Yes. And you get a death curse. I love it because my character started to almost age really badly. Because if you become a dark wizard in the game, it kind of uh, appears on your character mm. too. So I didn't look the best, Scarred but I didn't care. By the power. I didn't care. I was like, pew, pew, pew. I didn't care. You had to look the best. And then I was charge. trying to kill things that you couldn't kill. Like you go around and trying to like kill the professors, but you can't really do it. But you kind of get in trouble. I think it's great. I thought it was great. And game. you've never played GTA. This is amazing. I know. <laughs> I also want to play Red Dead Redemption. That's another game that's been uh, recommended to me. Yeah. yeah. I want to try that game. But yeah, uh, I great game. Love it. All right. I'm going to throw my honorable mention to something I, I believe is actually the game I have currently spent the single most time playing this year, which was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Shredder's Revenge. Oh, I forgot about this game. That yes. side scroller beat him up. It came out for, you know, all the major systems. Awesome music, great art, huge cast. They released cool DLC. They really extended the life of it. Uh, if you like Turtle, you know, you like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you look for something fun and easy. If you like um, you know, old school beat em ups, you know, River City Ransom, Double Dragons, anything like that. Again, can't recommend this highly enough. And yeah, it's available on everything. Give it, give it a try. It's not expensive, and you're going to have a great time. Okay. Teach me Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge. Honorable mention. My other honorable mention, and then I'll go to Game of the Year, was Ooblets. Ooblets. So it's like Pokemon meets Animal Crossing. Dancing Plant Pokemon. It's on the Switch. It's a, what I call a cozy game. Cozy. It's pretty, f I mean, it's, there's not really much to the story. You're just collecting Ooblets, which are that world's Pokemon. And you have, like, different, uh, different tasks to do through the day. So it's, it's very much of a repetitive game, but it's not, uh, it's not hard in the sense. It's like a game I enjoyed at nighttime where I can just like kind of play and then fall asleep too. Mm -hmm. So Ooblets would be my game. Oh, honorable mention, but it's not my game of my year. Your game, not your game of the year. Well, I think I know what your game of the year is. What is it? You might be wearing a shirt for it's, it. It's, that's true. It's, my, it's won a lot of awards for game it. of the year. Ass Starian. I'm not, I'm not his biggest fan. <laughs> I really enjoy Boulder's Gate 3. Oh, darling. Yes. I, uh, obviously, I'm a D&D &D nerd, so I was going to like it anyway. Nerd. I've never played any of the other Boulder's Gate games. Not a nerd. But it's definitely helps me learn more about 5e, uh, and it allows me to explore different classes. And what I like about it is I have, like, three campaigns going with three different characters, mm -hmm. and each campaign, even though I'm following almost the same story beats, it's different. It's different interactions. It's different storylines going on. Even though you're still kind of hitting A, B, and C, it's there, It's different paths you're taking to get to each of this, which I'm enjoying. I'm still in Act 1. I'm still, what, two more, three months out, and I'm still in Act 1, even though I'm in three campaigns, because there is so much to do. And it, I'm just enjoying it. This I... Lucky enough, I haven't had any spoilers yet for any of the characters' endings. I've avoided, like, the plague. But I, it's just, I think even if I were to know, I'm still going to enjoy getting getting to that. Recently, I've had to take a step back because I have had to kill Shadow Shadowheart. <laughs> and I have to figure out what I'm going to do. Because I need a cleric. But regardless, that, I, that is my game the of the year. That's, yes. Hey, fair enough. You know, I a lot of people enjoy it. It's on, I own it. As well, yeah, I know it, you do. It is on my two playlist. I unfortunately had some early game errors that made me not want to play it. I think playing with me also didn't help because I was like, "Hey, let's jump into this hole," and you're like, "No, we gotta like, nope." I jumped. <laughs> no, I mean that 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 sure didn't help. You are the world's most reckless D and D player for sure. You should be playing a barbarian at all times. Yeah, but now and, I'm playing a rogue in and, our own and around D &D her campaign and, and around her campaigns. But no, but I mean, I had I had issues where it was literally just like easy early game glitch stuff where it kept screwing up like character creation. My spells weren't saving in right. Um, or it was, it was a, it was really just a variety of small situations just kind of like that. I think I ended up having to remake my same character like three times, at least three times because I kept having issues. I promise you they fixed it. Oh, I'm sure they did, but I've got other things I'm playing right now, which is why for my game of the year, I'm putting forth super Mario bros. Wonder. I will also say, before we get to Super Mario Bros, Boulder's Gate 
three has completely changed the gaming world dynamic of having a it's complete game. game from like a complete game with maybe a few bugs here and there, but like a complete game it didn't change and the, the way it, went it back looks to how the game was. Yeah. How it Bunch looks of lazy video game creators. instead of getting an incomplete game and then having to do big updates or DLCs and stuff like that. I applaud a lot of hard work went into that game. But anyway, I, Mario. Well, I want to know. Hold on. I want to. I want to continue on that vein real quick because I literally. I think it was just last night. I saw this YouTube short where it was talking about current video game release schedules, and it was a guy who goes to a restaurant and he essentially it was like a, he just orders like a chicken sandwich. Like, all right, hold on. You know, we'll, we'll get that right out to you. And he just brings them out like five pickles on some on like a blob of mayo on a plate, and like this isn't a chicken sandwich. Like, well. It's the chicken sandwich we have now. Well, take it back. You know, like do some more work on it. And so like, it's got like half of a bun and like two less pickles, but the mayo is actually spread out this time. I was like, well, it's a little bit better. And then eventually, you know, he gets everything but the meat and like, oh, that's going to be DLC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, I know it's, it's making it hard for other gaming companies, but I mean, I don't know what to hey, tell you. Step up to the plate gaming companies. Yeah. Go for looking, it. looking at you, everyone who is not Larry in Studios. You know who you are. Mario? Mario? Mario. It's a me, Mario. I'm not big into Mario games, Mario so time. you were all on that one by yourself. Well, I mean, I don't, I really, this is... Mario Kart's as far as I'll go. Hey, Mario Kart's great, and fingers crossed between that and Smash Bros, there's some rumors circulating around the internet. Next year is uh, the, oof, tw- ready for this one? Next year is the 25-year anniversary of the original release of Super Smash Brothers. I was never into Super Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. I just... Jason would call that divorce words. Yeah, that's fine. (laughs) But um, no, but if you're not, even if you're not into Mario, for whatever reason, if you're just don't, you're not as much of a fan of like platformers, whatever it may be, this is actually a great one to get in on. They've made some changes to the classic formula, but not too much. It's really going to do that that two point, you know, that uh, two D, your standard two D levels, as you're going through them, it's got these great updated graphics that just look adorable and cozy. But the controls are tight, and there's some great puzzles and jumping and chases, escapes, true love, you know, the whole uh, the whole bit. But you know, for, for but that, there's cla- no bear scene. There, yeah, <laughs> there, but there is no bear scene. But but there's an elephant scene. Wowie zowie. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> No, because well, that's one of the new power-ups yeah. in this game is Mario turns into an elephant every time. And every time he does so, he goes, wowie zowie. But um, no, great new power-ups between the elephant Isn't and it the, the bubbles. New Mario voice too? Yes, and this is the first one that has the new voice of Mario. And if somebody's been playing it for years, I, I promise you I can hear the difference. But I remember I brought you into the room and you couldn't you yeah. I, I even mentioned to you, like, I don't hear it. I was like, okay, hey, fair enough. But you, again, you don't play it like I do. Mm-hmm. But the reason I, I got aside from my original point, the reason I think this is a great game for people who want to enjoy Mario, but maybe for you know some gameplay reasons haven't before. Number one, one of the big things they got rid of, which I love because I, the music in this is so good, they got rid of the level timer. Oh. So you can spend as much time in the level exploring it, practicing, do whatever you want, as much as you want, which is great because as always, there's all kinds of awesome hidden items. And then there's also characters that you can choose to play as outside of Mario. You know, you got Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, a couple of Toads, Toadette. Yoshi. But then you get to the Yoshis and Nabbit, and they're interesting because they can't, they don't get the power-ups, but they don't take damage from enemies. So, like, you're struggling with a section or whatever it may be, you can always kind of hop on a Yoshi or hop on Nabbit and kind of, like, work your way through but instead of just doing like the standard get to start to finish formula and Mario as well, the reason it's Mario Wonder is you're collecting these things called Wonder Seeds as you go through. And they do all kinds of fun, nifty things to like change up the stages from normal to just make them wacky and zany. And some of them are as simple as it just becomes like the, the screen just turns into shadow and you kind of got to make your way through the level in the dark or all the way up to there being... Uh, there's a stage you drop into and you collect one of the seeds. It's a bunch of pipes and a bunch of product plants are coming out. And as soon as you collect the wonder seed, it you have to survive it, not get hit, but it turns into like this short musical number where they're coming out and they're dancing and they're actually singing. <laughs> so it's like, 
they, there's any anything anything you can think of they're pretty much doing in this Mario. It's a lot of fun. Again, new power-ups are always a good time. And I will tell you, if you're like me and you're not, you know, I, I'm not struggling with most, you know, there's some harder ones that have taken multiple tries, but it's that rhythm jumping level. If you know what I'm talking about, the one where you, you know, you only got the, you got to stay inside the beats and yeah, you know what I'm talking about. If you're playing Mario Wonder, that stage <laughs> sucks. Well, I think that's 2023 for us. That's 2023 for us? Yeah. Already? Yeah. We know what that means. What? Got to like. Comment. Subscribe. And yeah. hit that notification bell. Yeah. So that way you can stay up to date with everything going on with Inside All Day in 2024 because we know you're ready for more. <laughs> Love it. Happy New Year's, everybody. Happy New Year's. <laughs> Thanks for joining us as always. And uh, stay safe and hydrated. <laughs>